Hello, Bergman Lights here. This is going to be the second video in a series of videos on my Tilt Up Mega Tree. Uh, this particular uh, video is going to focus on two areas. Uh, the first will be the mounting of the Tilt Up mechanism right here into the ground. It's only a real short little clip there, but uh, I'll, I'll walk through that that process of how I uh, put the concrete in place and and set it up so it would slide in and out easily. Uh, the second part is going to go through the modification of the Matos ring, and here's one section of it, um, and how I mounted all of these brackets onto it for attaching all the mega tree strips. All right, so let's get going. Since I'm recording this video after I actually put the concrete in the ground out in my front yard, I thought I'd do a little short little walkthrough here um, with the uh, tilt-up mechanism, which is two parallel pieces of uh, two-inch steel pipe uh, welded together. You could also bolt it. The main thing is that they're, they're parallel, as close as you can get them to be. All right, and what I did is I took receiver hitch steel. Here's a one piece of it. It's a pretty decent size that's left over. Um, and what I did is I put my hole in the ground and put the receiver steel over the edit on both both sections set it up in the ground all right um, and then I laid everything out leveled everything and then I uh, put, poured the concrete around it and I was able to slide it in and out easily so on the screen now you see the tilt-up mechanism sitting in its receiver steel uh, with the uh, concrete already in place so what I did to prepare before I poured that concrete is I took the two pieces of receiver steel, which was each were three foot long, right? I dug a deep hole. It's actually standing down in it as I dug the hole. Um, and then I put a little gravel on the bottom of that to make sure if any water could, it would actually drain away and not build up inside the tube. Um, then I set the receiver steel, two pieces in there and the tilt up mechanism in the hole. Uh, I made sure it moved freely, moved it up and down, so when you pull the tilt-up mechanism up and out, the receiver steel stayed in place. There was a little bit of adjustment there to make sure it would slide easily. You may actually need to use a little bit of WD-40 to make sure everything moves easily. Then I uh, trued it up, made sure it was straight up and down. And once I got that plumb, you'll see the two pieces of wood there on the screen where I've... Uh, taking that and attach it to the hinge point, that three quarter inch bolt on the top, and I staked it in place. And then I double checked to make sure everything was was true. And at that point, I poured my concrete and I let it let it cure. <clears throat> you also see with the concrete, I didn't come in all the way to the top level of the soil. What I did there, I left an inch, maybe two inches of room for soil to go over the top of it. It's that so that way so we could plant uh, you know our annuals there in in the spring so nobody could tell that a mega tree goes there in the off season so that's how I kind of configured and set up the tilt up mechanism for its location in the in my yard All right, next what I'm going to go do is I'm going to uh, go through the uh, configuration of the uh, the mantos hoop so I'm in the shop configuring the bottom hoop. And what I've done is I've taken some one inch angle and I've cut a two inch long piece, put a hole to connect the uh, strip of lights to it. And I've taken a hole here, or put two holes actually, and bolted it to the Matos uh, square ring. Uh, the spacing, I'm gonna have 32 strings of lights and the spacing between them is about four and three quarters inches for an eight foot hoop. So I'm just going through and methodically cutting it. I set the, my drill press up for these pieces of angle so that the distance between the holes are identical for each one. Uh, I just set up a little jig to do each one. Then I'm drilling it and I'm tapping into the square tube. And that way I can mix and match these things. Because so I'm going to take these off and I'm going to end up painting them. But when I'm getting them all set, you can see the marks I've made for the center line of each of those pieces of angle. I spent some time lining up my drill bit to the, the, the uh, mark I made 
for the, the hole, I make sure it's centered on it. And I just simply turn on my drill press. And drill the hole, nice and slow, the three. There we go. So that was a slow speed on my drill press. It's a thin piece of metal, so it really doesn't heat up much, so it works really well. All right, so I'm using 5 16 inch grade 8 bolts. And there's my tap here. Um, it's a 5 16 18 uh, tap. And I just put it over the top of the hole, keep it perpendicular to it and just slowly turn it. If this was a uh, harder metal, I'd probably put some uh, lubricant down on it. I'm just going nice and slow, cutting the threads. There you go, all cut and spins free. So I'm gonna spin it out. So now with the hole tapped, I'm gonna take my grade eight bolt and my bracket, put it right over the hole and I'm just gonna thread it in. And I'm using a three quarter inch long, five, six inches bolt. I'm just gonna screw it down and I'm gonna secure it. Okay, so I got it in there nice and tight. So now it's, it's locked into position. And I've lined the front face up front flush with the front face of the of the hoop. And now I'm just gonna take the other hole and I'm gonna mark it just like the last one. And I'm gonna now take this over to the drill press. So now that I have the drill press, I'm gonna spend some time and I'll show you what I did, did last time, but it's more critical on the second hole is I'm going to line up the bit, make sure, look on both sides of it, make sure it's got equal spacing, and then I'm going to rotate the bit 90 degrees. No, not quite centered. Lift it up a little bit. That looks about right. What about the other direction? Looks good. So now I'm going to turn on the drill press. Now I drilled my hole. The next step will be to loosen up this bolt and then tap the hole. I'm just gonna spin it out of my way, get my metal shavings out of my out of the way, and now I'm gonna do just did last like last hole. I'm gonna tap it. And just be careful to keep it perpendicular. Nice and slow, cut them out. Getting close, it's cutting the threads, making them wider. Now I'm using a quarter inch drill bit. Um, the uh, standard for thin metal is a little bit larger drill bit, but I don't have that one that's like a letter size drill bit. I looked it up online on its size and I, oh, it's, it's an odd size. But with this thin metal, uh, there really is no issue in my mind of using the standard quarter inch drill bit. All right, now I just thread it in. Sinks it down. And the brackets uh, in place won't rotate. You see, I've done a bunch already. I just got a few more to do. I'm doing 32 of them. Once I get them all cut and installed, I'll be painting them and then reinstalling them. I made sure that the bolt spacing between each of the brackets is the same so I can mix and match them if they get out of order. So no matter which, each bracket will install on the holes that I'm drilling here for them so there won't be any issues of, you know, keeping track of which one goes where. And I did that with a jig on my drill press. Every single one of the left holes were drilled on the same jig and then I made I modified the jig do all the right hand holes, all are the same, so the spacing between them is identical. 
Well, I've uh, finished assembling and painting my bottom ring for my tilt-up mega tree pole. Yeah. On the very end, to keep the uh, four and uh, seven eighths spacing between each of the holes, uh, I had to make a special bracket here on the end. Basically, I took two pieces of angle and welded those together, and then I bolted it to the bolted it to the ring and also to the bottom pole. Uh, the center attachment here, and that center pole has my winch. Again, that's a worm gear winch. That way, it doesn't come crashing down when I'm trying to lower it. It's slow. It's a little bit of a pain, but it's definitely much safer since I'm going to be underneath it as I'm cranking it up. And you'll see the rest of them here. You'll also see uh, I had to make a special bracket on this end as well. And I bolt that to the ring or to the post. And each of those, I had three posts. I bolted those to the dual post arrangement and made a, a receiver a hitch for the two inch uh, square tubing. And I have three of them obviously. And I put them in and I put a bolt in to hold it in position. So that wraps up how I put the uh, tilt up mechanism in the ground and how I modified the Matos hoop. Uh, I'll have a, at least one other video on the tilt-up mechanism here in my own design. So uh, I hope this helps somebody out there. You guys have a wonderful day.